Hello, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the uncomplicated firewall for Linux. It's available on, I believe, most distributions, but I, of course, uh, if you watch my videos, you know I use Ubuntu or Debian mostly, and it's available on those. That's what I use. Um, so firewalls are very important. They protect your computer from connections. <laughs> um, UFW allows mere mortals to create firewall rules. If you ever try to use like IP tables, it can be kind of daunting. Um, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through all you need to know about using this specific firewall, this UFW. So, whoops, I lost my keyboard. Okay, so a bit of a warning before we uh, start anything. So, it's very easy to lock yourself out of a remote system. So imagine if you're messing around the firewall and if you just decide to block your ports that you're using for your SSH connection, you won't be able to log back in because your firewall is blocking all connections on port 22. And that's gonna be a bad time. So be very careful about um, creating these firewall rules because you don't want to lock yourself out. So on a lot of systems, it'll be available already, but if not, then just do your standard app get install UFW. And before we do anything, we should know you can always reset the rules, the firewall with the reset commands, which is UFW reset. It's going to reset it back to the default settings. So the default settings for UFW is to allow all outgoing connections and block all incoming connections and by default, it's going to be disabled. So it's not going to be active and it's not going to start being active when you boot. You can check that status by just saying UFW status. Notice uh, you do need to have sudo or broot in order to run these commands. I'm just kind of leaving that out for, yeah, just leaving that out. So you can check the status of the firewall by saying UFW status. And if you just installed it or if you haven't really did anything, it's probably going to say it's inactive, which means it's not doing anything. It's not blocking any traffic. It's not allowing any traffic. It's doing nothing. Um, so, uh, we can also get a larger table that'll tell us, um, like, here we go, we've got service names and we've got, um, ports and whether or not they're allowed or not. Don't worry about it right now. We're going to go through it step by step and you'll understand what's happening in that table. Just want to show you. So we can say that, um, things are verbose. So we can say status of verbose and that's going to give us a longer thing. So it's one actually includes when that logging's on, um, I guess a profile name. Just more stuff. Just want to give you a, a full overview of what it does. You don't need to remember all this stuff. As a matter of fact, all of these instructions, all this stuff, I'm gonna have a link to uh, the blog post that's gonna have everything. So, you know, this is more. This video is for you to sit back, relax, watch, learn about the firewall UFW, and uh, get a good grasp of it before you actually get your hands dirty. So, uh, numbered. We can also see these rules numbered for convenience. So just. Uh, UFW status numbered, and you can see that you get that table again, but this time there are these bra square brackets numbering, oops, num oops, <laughs> I guess I can't do that, but there's square brackets numbering each rule. And these are get really useful when we start looking at deleting rules. Okay, so if we want to reload, so let's say we've added or removed rules, and now we want the firewall to reload all of its rules, it's really simple, just UFW reload. It's going to look at things and re set itself up again. Um, enable, enable skin to um, reload that those rules. And then it's also gonna start the firewall on next boot. So every time the computer boots, it's gonna start up UFW. Disable is a reverse of that. It's gonna unload the firewall and it's not gonna start anymore when the machine boots up. So allow and deny. <sighs> I messed this up last time, let's see if I can get this. Uh, so a firewall is really just a set of rules for networking. There are rules about who can connect with what machine and who the machine can connect with. Hopefully that makes sense there. Uh, rules about the rules are basically about ports, protocols, and hardware and IP, IP addresses. <laughs> um, so, uh, UFW makes it pretty easy to write these rules and, uh, the rules we're writing, sorry, I, I, I was trying to not step ahead of myself. The rules we're writing are really about what we allow and what we deny. So we're trying to simplify things. So we can describe all these rules basically as allow and deny, and then being more specific about what we're allowing and denying. So let's get right into an example of ports. So let's say we want our, we have an SSH server, that SSH server is serving um, connections on port 22, so it's listening on a non-standard port. So we want to allow that. So it's very, very simple. We say UFW allow 
2020. That will allow incoming connections to port 2020. And let's say we want to deny all connections to port 22. Well, then we just say UFW deny 22. So any connections to port 22 from the outside is going to be denied. And these two, these ports are for TCP and UDB. U <laughs> TCP and UDP connections. So you, you covered them both right there. Later on, we'll get into how to write specific TCP or UDB. UT. My goodness, I cannot, can't say it. UDP connections later. My goodness, I am so sorry. Okay, so services. So we can also do things by just the name of the service. So some services like on Ubuntu, when things are installed, it'll add itself to this UFW app list. So let's run that command. You on this example here, all I have available are cups, which I think is like a network printing service and open SSH. So we want to allow open SSH. So we're going to say UFW allow open SSH. This is really nice because some services might have more ports than just one, right? They might have several ports. You might need to allow a bunch of stuff. And so having these name services allows you just to use it by name and say, Hey, open SSH gave us these rules. Let's use those rules because I want to use open SSH. Um, and if I want to deny it, you can also say UFW deny open SSH. Although this is a very, very bad idea. Um, do not run that because uh, you'll lose your connection to the remote machine. Remember when I was talking about uh, how easy that was? Like this little command, you run that little command and you are, you can't connect your machine anymore. At least not through SSH. Hopefully you've got another way. Uh, okay, so addresses. We can also allow connections or deny connections for specific IP addresses. So let's say we want to allow connections from this IP address of, uh, I don't need to read it out. You can read it. Um, this is how it's very simple. UFW allow from, so we're allowing connections from this IP address. The reverse of that, if we want to deny someone, let's say someone is like, you know, whoever is at this IP address is up to no good and they keep on trying to do stuff. We can just block them entirely by saying UFW deny from, so all connections from that IP address are going to be denied. Now protocols, which I hinted at it earlier and why I couldn't say the words. I think this is why I reversed them. I think it's easier to say UDP and TCP. Saying TCP and UDP, I got me confused. Hopefully I'm not confusing you totally. Okay, they're just two different protocols and we can create rules for each one of those protocols specifically. So. We will only want to allow TCP connections in this example on port 80. All we say is UFW allow TCP slash or 80. You got to just find the port slash the protocol and that will allow it. And you can also do the same thing and deny just like maybe you're kind of seeing the pattern when I said about that allow and deny is all about what we allow and what we deny and then we can make specific rules. So in this example, UFW deny 80 slash UDP, that's going to block all connections to port 80 on the UDP protocol. If you don't know the difference between UDP and TCP, don't worry about it. You can, there's plenty of awesome YouTube videos about it, but don't worry. So uh, interfaces. So sometimes you're going to have multiple network interfaces and you're probably going to want to treat them differently, right? Maybe you have a Wi-Fi. Or maybe you have, yeah, you could have a Wi-Fi and you have a wired connection. Maybe your wired connection is for your local web server and your Wi-Fi is, I don't know, something else. But we can allow that. So um, you're going to need to know your hardware names. Uh, that'll be different on different people's hardware. So this is a good example of what we're going to do is say that our Ethernet port is going to allow connections from anybody on port 80. So we're going to go through. So UFW, this is a rule that allows something. This is the hardware, ETHO, which is usually, I believe, always going to be your Ethernet, and then port 80. So we can also kind of make rules for incoming and outgoing connections, right? So maybe you want um, connections that are coming in from port 80, but you don't want connections going out from port 80. So look here. Um, UFW allow in, you're allowing incoming connections to port 80. And here we go. We're going to deny it. Let's say we just have, we're just picking an arbitrary port right here of uh, 3389. We want to deny all outgoing connections for 3389. We say UFW deny out 3389. Hopefully 
you're kind of seeing that pattern now deny in out so it makes it reasonable we can also compose complex rules by combining some of the elements here so in this example what we this allows is connections from port 22 from a specific ip address okay we can also do limits so limits allow us to rate limit connections so in this example we're going to say ufw limit ssh what that's going to do is say that there should only be six attempts within 30 seconds and if you exceed that then we're going to limit that we're going to not allow people to continue to it to connect so this kind of can help you from um like some uh denial of service attacks kind of <laughs> it's not a very good defense against it but it's a bit of something um we can also do rejections so sometimes you want you don't you want to reject connections and that oftentimes it's it's like basically telling the person trying to connect to you that you don't want them to go away almost um so we can hear let's say we want to reject all connections on port 666 ufw reject 666 very very simple once again if you want to refer to these later on i've got a whole blog post that goes through the whole all of these things so don't worry about it right now so deleting rules so eventually you're going to want to delete rules that you've created right because you know you you might make some silly rules or maybe that server doesn't run um like nginx anymore there's no web server on this thing so i don't want that to be open so um you can do that pretty simple um we can do delete so ufw delete and then this allow 80 so right we had a rule that was allowing connections to port 80 and we wanted to delete that rule that can get confusing right don't use this this is not the best way the better way is by numbers number one we did the ufw status numbered and gave you that cool oh this is kind of smushed but it gave you that nice little um kind of table here what we can see so we can delete by numbers so if we wanted to delete the 22 which you don't want to do you just refer to that as two, four, sorry, four. And if you wanted to delete that rule for um, port 2020, you would delete rule three. This is much cleaner than earlier. You may have seen that. I died. Doing it like this, soups can get kind of confusing. But like this, when you do it, this is way better. So you just delete it by its rule. So I know I want to delete rule eight. So I just say UFW delete rule eight. Could not be simpler that way comments are always a good idea right um and comments in your firewall rules can be really good too because i mean just in general comments are kind of like notes to yourself in the future you know like you might know why you opened up port 22 yeah but in a year will you and 22 that's pretty obvious but like that um what was it uh 3389 you might not even know what service was running on 3389 but if you leave yourself a little note right here i'm doing a really obvious but you know that's just for illustration so i'm saying i want to allow port 22 and then you say comment and then you have your quotation marks and then your string in the middle and now when we run the status it will actually oh no i think it got cut off okay it's a little bit it's hard, it's hard to get these these terminal outputs to fit in the slides and be visible so if you look here there's a rule there's a for a rule for port 22 you scroll all the way over it's got a comment for my ssh just in case you didn't know but you can see how that'd be quite useful like if we had this 88 we don't even know what's running on 88 what needs port 88 no one left a comment i have no idea so you can see why commenting is nice uh logs we can also instruct our firewall to maintain logs so that's really easy you have to logging on um conclusion so firewall rules can get pretty complex really fast and I hope this little tutorial made it a little bit easier. Um, if you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to this channel. And um, yes, thank you so much for watching.